Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono green venture into the dungeon deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring Ellie Wick Tumblestrom as our commander. The 4 mana planeswalker recently got updated in Alchemy, where she can now ultimate with a minus 6 as opposed to a minus 7, so could ultimate a whole turn sooner. Then the plus 1 lets us venture into the dungeon, so there's three different dungeons to choose from. Usually we're going to start out with the Lost Mine of Phandelver, which is just a good neutral dungeon that's relatively fast to complete, but we could also go with the Tomb of Annihilation if we want to complete one very quickly. Then the minus two lets us take a look at the top six cards of our library to reveal a creature. If it's legendary, we also gain three life. And the minus six gives us an emblem saying creatures we control have trample and haste and get plus two plus two for each differently named dungeon we've completed. So the eventual goal is to complete as many dungeons as possible. Then to help us with that quest, we're playing all the available dungeon cards that are in mono green, which is not too many, but we're playing all of them, including 50 feet of rope, which can pay 4 mana tap to venture into the dungeon. We've got Intrepid Outlander, a 2-3 with reach, that can attack with pack tactics to venture. We've got Cursed Idol, which can destroy an artifact or enchantment, but can also create a treasure token and venture. At 3 mana, Find the Path also got updated where it now makes 2 mana of any one color, of course not too relevant in a mono green deck, but also lets us venture when it enters. Varus is probably one of the better ways to do it, as a 3-3 legendary creature with reach and ward 1, and whenever we cast a creature or planeswalker spell we get to venture, and whenever we complete a dungeon we create a 2-2 green wolf creature token. Then we've got dungeon map which can help us ramp or pay 3 mana tap to venture, and then at 4 mana, Wandering Troubadour is a 4-2 creature that at the beginning of our end step, if we had a land enter the battlefield under our control this turn, lets us venture as well. And then Dungeon Descent also got updated, where it now only costs 1 mana to tap and activate, to tap an untapped legendary creature we control, and venture into the dungeon. Then taking a look at the other cards in the deck, we're going to need a little bit of mana acceleration to try and get Eliwick in play as soon as possible. So if we can play Eliwick turn 3, we can start venturing right away. So at 1 mana there's Lenor Elves, at 2 mana Druid of the Cowl, Elysian Karyatid can potentially make 2 mana if we control a large creature. Incubation Druid can also adapt to pick up some plus 1 counters, at which point it makes 3 mana. Leafkin Druid can make 2 mana if we control 4 or more creatures. Overgrown Battlement makes mana equal to the number of creatures with Defender we control, and we've got a few additional Defenders in the deck. Paradise Druid has Hexproof, so it doesn't get removed right away, so we can guarantee a turn 3 Eliwick. We've got Tangled Florahedron, which can also be played as a tap land if needed. We'll follow Haven and Chance one of our lands to produce additional green mana. And then we've got some Artifact Ramp with Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol and Mindstone, and even an Ornithopter of Paradise as a flying creature that can potentially block opposing flyers to protect our planeswalkers. And then we've got a little bit of additional mana acceleration with Into the North finding a Snowlands to put in play tapped. And we also have the Prosperous Innkeeper, which makes a treasure when he enters, which we can then sacrifice to still play turn 3 Eliwick. And Sculptor of Winter can tap to untap target Snowland, which is another way of ramping. Then at 1 mana we've got Abundant Harvest as a nice cantrip to find a land or non-land. Ascendant Pack later a 2-1 that will pick up plus 1 plus 1 counters over time. And Blizzard Brawl, a great removal spell to go with the 32 Snow-Covered Forests. Then we've got Elvish Visionary, a 1-1 that draws a card when it enters, gives us an extra body to leverage the minus 6 ultimate. We've got Fauna Shaman, which can discard a creature card to search our library for any creature to put into our hand, so it can maybe find Varys or the Wandering Troubadour to help us venture into the dungeon. Then we've got Once Upon a Time, which can be cast for free if it's our first spell, to find a creature or land in the top 5. Outland Liberator can destroy artifacts or enchantments. Got Ranger class, which makes a token, can level it up to provide plus one counters on attacks, and on level three can provide a nice bit of card advantage. Then Scavenging Ooze deals with graveyards nicely. We've got Wall of Blossoms as an extra defender to go with our two mana accelerant, and then also draws a card when it enters, an 0-4 good at protecting our planeswalkers. We've got Wildborn Preserver, a 2-2 that we can flash in, has reach, and whenever another non-human enters, we can pay mana to put plus one plus one counters on it. Then Sylvan Anthem will give our green creatures plus one plus one, and whenever a green creature enters we get to scry one. Werewolf Pack Leader a 3-3 that can provide card advantage with pack tactics. 
and Heart of Kiron, a 4-4 vehicle with flying and vigilance, crew cost is 3, but we can also remove a loyalty from a planeswalker to crew it instead, so it plays well with our commander. Then we've got more ramp with Cultivate at 3 mana, Reclamation Sage to deal with artifacts and enchantments, Augur of Autumn can provide a nice bit of card advantage off the top, we're pretty good at enabling Coven. The Carven carried it another defender that also draws a card when it enters. We've got the Steel Leaf Champion as a 5-4 that's hard to block, and Yorvo, Lord of Garenbrick, is essentially a 4-4 that will grow as we play more green creatures. And then we also cannot forget about the Old Growth Troll at 3 mana, 4-4, that when it dies leaves behind an enchantment that can turn into a 4-4 Troll Warrior token with Trample. Then at 4 mana, there's the Gem Razor, another way to deal with artifacts or enchantments when it mutates. We've got the Questing Beast, a 4-4 with Vigilance, Death Touch, Haste, and a whole host of other abilities, good at killing Planeswalkers. And Timeless Witness to return cards from our graveyard can also be eternalized for 7 mana. Then we've got a bunch of Planeswalkers at 5 mana, between Vivian, Monsters, Advocate, can provide card advantage by letting us cast creatures off the top, and can make 3-3 beasts with various abilities. We've got the Vivian Reed Planeswalker as well, that can destroy artifacts or enchantments, as well as creatures with flying, and the plus one can also find a creature or land in the top four. We've got Primal Command, can find any creature as one of the more used modes, or put a non-creature permanent on top of its owner's library, maybe put a land back on top of the opponent's library to slow them down. And then Elder Gargroth, just a very efficient creature, as a 6-6 with various abilities. And then at 5 mana we also have our Nissa who shakes the world, Planeswalker, doubling our mana and making 3-3 three, three creatures in the process. And then topping off our curve with a Great Henge, a nice source of card advantage, becomes cheaper to play the larger creature we control, and then can make mana, draw cards and gain life. We've got Vorinclex, Monstrous Raider, which can potentially double the loyalty of our Planeswalkers, which makes it easier to ultimate. We've got Koglath, a Titan Ape, fighting something when it enters, can also destroy artifacts or enchantments when it attacks, and Plain White Celebration, very useful at potentially returning permanents from a graveyard to our hand, can also proliferate a few times to maybe help ultimate or planeswalkers. At first I had more cards with proliferate in the deck or ways to add more counters to our permanent, but at the end of the day, while we could maybe ultimate an Eliwick on turn 4 or turn 5, it's not that useful when we haven't completed a dungeon yet, so better to just take a slower approach, but Celebration still has plenty of other uses. And then the mana base is pretty straightforward, with 32 snow-covered forests, and then a few utility lands include Lair of the Hydra, which can turn into a creature, alongside Faceless Haven and Mobilized District, which is cheaper to activate the more legendary creatures and planeswalkers we control. We've got Castle Garenbrick, which can give us a nice mana discount. Hash Up Oasis can maybe pump up a creature, as well as the Colony Garden making an 0-1 plant token, an extra chum blocker to protect our planeswalkers. And then we've already mentioned Dungeon Descent, and finally Karn's Bastion can also proliferate to maybe add a counter to our various permanents. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing Nissa of Shadowed Bows, and our hand is missing a 2-mana Accelerant, so as a rule, I think we got a mulligan. Alright, this is better. Turn 1 Lunar Elves, turn 2... Could even play a tapped Florahedron alongside Cold Steel Hearts to set up turn 3 Eliwick and then play Nissa. That sounds okay. Could even play Nissa before Eliwick with this hand. But we'll see what our opponent has in terms of interaction. Forsaken Crossroads scries to the top, and yeah, we'll stick to the plan, I think. And then turn 3 Nissa could untap a land attack, still play Liberator. Should leave us in a good position, and then Eliwick can start venturing with Cursed Idol. As a nice backup. Can 
Chupacabra kills the snow forest. And yeah, let's play Eliwick. Venture. And don't mind going for Lost Mine, or we could speed it up by going with the Oubliettes. But yeah, Oubliettes are going to be a little painful, I think. So let's go with uh, Lost Mine instead. And don't eat forest. Rise, my elemental friend. Can hit, and then probably want to keep the Liberator back. And then I could Cursed Idol to venture again if I wanted to. It's probably okay. And then we'll make a Goblin. Pass it back. And then next turn, if I don't have anything better going on, could also Timeless Witness back. Cursed Idol. And then the turn after we could maybe Ultimate Eliwick to give the team plus two plus two. Alright, opponent has got their own Nissa who shakes the world. Untaps a swamp. Opponent's gonna pass. I'll land the draw. So what's the next part of our adventure here? We cannot shrink an opposing creature down, but we can add a plus one plus one counter. Which is still useful. And then I could draw a card to complete the dungeon by getting back Cursed Idol as well. So that seems fine. Uh, I just love a and then probably put it on the Liberator. Play a Witness. Dungeon completed. Be wary of the ground you walk on. And then do I send everyone at Nissa? Still want to keep something back, of course, to protect our own planeswalkers, but two of our lands have vigilance. So if I attack like this, they can trade. Chump, take three. If I send everyone, then they might let Nissa go. And then eat two of my creatures for free. And then next turn my planeswalkers would be under pressure. So I think we just send those three big guys. Opponent doesn't have too many forests in play, so hopefully Nissa's not too threatening. And our opponent will lose a land in the process. Alright, so cross our fingers that we can ultimate Eliwick. Could even ultimate Nissa. So a lot of pressure on the opponent to make something happen. Chasm comes into play tapped. Opponent still has I think seven mana total once they untap the forests. And a Vorinclex, okay. Glad they weren't able to play that sooner, but it is a Trampler. So it can still prevent an ultimate here. Goes for Nissa. Alright, so at least we get to ultimate Eliwick, and then probably don't want to chump when our creatures are about to get plus two plus two. Okay, so that's Abundant Harvests. Find a non-land. Vivian, not incredibly useful with the Vorinclex out, but yeah, we can emblem. And then I could try and replay Eliwick, but probably better off just animating my forests, activating Guardian Idol, and this should be lethal.
Alright, sweet. Got to Ultimate Alleywick in our first game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Samut's Voice of Descent. What do we think of this hand? No two-man accelerant, probably means Mulligan. Alright, once again greeted by Eleanor Elves. And a Cold Steel Heart, plenty of ramp, can even once upon a time before casting Elf. And look for one of our various venture creatures. And Varus is perfect. So I could go turn 2 Varus, turn 3 Alleywick, which also triggers Varus. Playing an extra Accelerance makes it more likely that we can play turn 3 Alleywick in case they kill the Elf. But I want to just maximize the Varus triggers too. It's going to be the Redeemed potentially doubling tokens, so this could be a Naya tokens deck instead. We're just going to play Alleywick. And probably go for Lost Mine. It's kind of a safe dungeon to start out with. And do I want forests? Not really, but I guess we don't have a land drop, so sure. Make a goblin. And we'll uh, probably attack. Now that we have a goblin to protect our planeswalker. Song of Freilis basically makes two additional mana. No attacks. Alrighty. So what's the plan now? If I put a plus one counter on Varus, I could play Great Henge. So that's appealing. Who's ready for adventure? And then we can still ramp. Opponent might have some instant speed token maker. So I'm gonna keep Varus back on defense now, I think. And this can find a Faceless Haven, too. And then next turn, I could complete a dungeon by playing Augur and then already Emblem. But we might keep Alleywick around, we'll see. Welcoming a Vampire for card advantage. And a Gergroth, a nice blocker for it. So, yeah, let's play Gergroth. Complete our dungeon. And Vivian a nice draw. And I think I'm happy enough cashing in Eliwick for an emblem. And then giving the team haste means we can smash in with the Gargroth right away. And our opponent's gonna be pretty far behind. Have a ton of mana now, especially when we play Leafkin Druid to replayer. Our opponent's reading Eliwick's ultimate. Yeah, now only minus six as opposed to a minus seven, so the deck got quite a bit better. Verdant Command makes two squirrels, draws with the Welcoming Vampire, probably the instant they were holding up last turn. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Elishnorn. So we'll have to try and counteract the minus two minus two to our team with Eliwix emblem, because we don't have much removal for Elishnorn. This hand's not bad, got a bit of acceleration with Mindstone, hopefully pick up a third land for turn three Eliwick, if not, I've got some other ways to ramp as well. Let's play Eliwick. Could be pressured by Blink Moth Nexus, but that's most of the opponent's turn gone. <laughs> Come on, hurry up, let's go. And lost mine to Scry. Wouldn't mind an extra land. I 
No, opponent is going to fire up Blink Moth. Next turn we've got a Heart of Kiron to maybe help block Blink Moth as well. And then Treasure or 1-1 one, one Goblin. Kind of liking Treasure, especially if our opponent gets Elishnorn down before we can ultimate. So... And then we can maybe Lenore Visionary plus Heart, or if we want to apply more pressure, Troll plus Heart. And then the Troll can also crew the Heart of Kiron without having to spend any loyalty. And next turn the two Elves could crew the Heart as well. For mana, kind of expecting some ramp here from our opponents to try and get Elish Norn down, but nope. Blink Moth gonna attack. Not sure if they have some instant speed removal here for Heart of Kiron, but we're about to find out. If it's a source to plow shares, that could also exile old growth trolls, so. Fine if it exiles heart instead. Alright, looks like that actually worked. And a glass casket can maybe get rid of it now. Fair enough. That's a trade I'm pretty happy to make. Get the battlements to combo with wall of blossoms. So next up we can drain the opponent for one. And then, sure, let's see what we draw. Another lanes. Probably want to play Visionary, and then I guess I still get to play Battlement if I sack my treasure. Might be overextending into a Sweeper a little bit. So I could just go for end of turn once upon a time. The fact that they... Wanted to get rid of Heart of Kiron so badly. Might imply that they have a sweeper. And they just wanted to get rid of the harder to deal with vehicle. And nothing too amazing, but a mobilized district as a creature lands not bad. Alright, so let's see. If I play and activate, I could emblem Eliwick. Which might be worth it here. Yeah, sure, why not? And then Visionary, or even Battlement into Visionary, since it has haste, so we can make two mana right away. All right, nice. Opponent will need a sweeper now, and even if they do, they're still mobilized district and the enchantment from old growth troll we can use. So yeah, even a single way to venture in addition to Eliwick can make a big difference. Ooh, Hour of Revelation destroys all permanents, also gives my Heart of Kiron back. So, can we kill them between District and Heart? I guess Heart will turn into a 6-6. Six, six. Still one short. So I could make a troll. Although I guess it comes into play tapped, so never mind, it cannot crew Heart. So might have wanted to do that end of turn instead. This could crew the Heart to hit for a little bit more. So yeah, slight misstep on uh, activating the old growth trolls enchantment. But if our opponent does wipe the board, they're still mobilized district or Eliwick to crew heart of Kiron, so I think we'll be alright. So 
settle the wreckage could still be a concern. Although, I think we've got an interesting solution for that as well. And yeah, there's settled wreckage. Kind of excited to show off our uh, interesting way to win the game here. So, second main. Get to venture into the dungeon. And each player loses one life. The perfect way to end this game. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Halana and Helena, which is a very scary commander when our deck doesn't have much removal. But I'll try this, we've got some acceleration, hopefully our opponent presents a target for Gem Racer to destroy. Well, Ginger Brutes will work. And then we'll play the Ornithopter over Mindstone, since we can maybe tap this right away in a future turn. So it looks like a very low to the ground a red green aggro deck. Varys, a nice draw. Could even mutate Gem Racer next turn. If the Ornithopter survives. Champion of Lampold is scary. And the Ornithopter at zero power, unable to block anything. So, yeah, could go for Gem Racer. As opposed to Alleywick, which is going to be under quite a bit of pressure. If I play Varus, I guess I get to Mindstone into Varus. That's also reasonable. Still a good blocker. And then next turn, I get to mutate Gem Racer. Although our opponent's probably going to put two counters on Champion. I guess that still allows us to block the other creatures here. Yeah, close call. I think Mindstone into Varus is acceptable. But long term, I don't really see us beating the partners here if they can get it down. Alright, Marauding Raptor. So no partners, that's good news. And Fauna Shaman could eventually find a Troubadour. Don't mind mutating Gem Razor onto the Ornithopter. Or we can uh, try and double spell. Maybe Ellie Wake plus Fauna Shaman, but then uh, we're gonna probably lose Ellie Wake next turn as soon as they play the partners. So that doesn't seem great. So I think Mutate plus Fauna Shaman might be the play. And Overgrown Battlements, I guess a fine creature to draw and maybe discard to Fauna Shaman next turn. Destroy Ginger Brutes. And play Shaman. And then I think we need to keep Gem Razor back. Because next turn, Partners puts two counters on Champion. So then this can still hold off some attacks. Don't think we're outracing the opponent. I guess the Partners add a total of three counters to the Champion of Lampold. So it was probably better off attacking with the Gem Razor last turn since we couldn't block. So what can Fauna Shaman find here that helps me in any way, shape or form? Something like Kogla to fight, I guess, could be helpful. Kill the partners. Yeah, that's probably my best bet. Could also fight the uh, Champion of Lampholds first. Which is a little bit more threatening right now. Since they could have just replayed partners thanks to the mana discount. And I uh, guess we'll start attacking now.
Ooh, God Eternal Ronos. Yeah, that's painful. Four counters on Fireblade Charger. I guess we can chump it with a Goblin. Alright, so what do we want to find next with Fauna Shaman? Do you have anything left to fight here? Doesn't look like it. Could go for... Wandering Troubadour, but I don't have a land. Could go for Gergroth as just something big. That I can still play here. Vorinclax into Alleywick could also be good if we can get closer to an emblem. But for now, Gergroth seems fine. Can put a counter on Gem Racer, perhaps. Pass it back. Ronos now is 7 7. Alright, I guess we'll uh, make some blocks. Opponent could also have a mass pump spell of some sort. Maybe give the team two additional power, that sort of thing. But let's say we block like this. Take five from Fireblades. The other blocks look fine. Could also try and keep Kogla so we can pick up our human to make it indestructible later. But I think given that we're activating Fauna Shaman, that's going to be too complicated to activate. And then we'll make a Beasts or draw card. A Beast to chump the uh, Fireblade Charger could be fine. Heroic Intervention makes their team indestructible. Makes sense, so we still lose Kogla to the God Eternal. So now I might want to get Vorinclex, so next turn I can play Alleywick and Ultimate right away. And it will also reduce the counters from the partners. Get to draw, make a wolf. And Gergroth gets to attack unopposed. And uh, I could gain life or make another beast. Let's make another beast. Plays better with the uh, emblem next turn. Assuming we survive. Charging Tuskodon. Triggers. 5-3. Opponent passes, alright. So, get to play Alleywick and Emblem. And then... I guess we'll uh, gain a life here, sure. Add an Augur of Autumn. Probably don't need to use Fauna Shaman anymore. And I'm guessing I'm fine to attack with the team. And we'll uh, make a beast just in case. Opponent does have a Fireblade Charger, which could still deal damage on the way out. But do they have enough toughness to survive? We're about to find out. Could have also decided to make each player lose one life. We'll see if that would have made a difference. It would not have. Alright, sweet. So Fauna Shaman saves the day. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play facing Adlin, Resplendent Cathar, White Aggro. Can be a very scary deck. This hand's missing any form of acceleration, so gonna take that free mulligan. 
All right, no turn two accelerant, but once upon a time can maybe find one. So I'll give this a shot. Being on the play in this type of matchup also very important. And then we just want to try and get our creatures in play as soon as possible. A Lair of the Hydra or Yorvo. Probably want to land here. Sadly, into the north. Not something we're allowed to take. And then turn two can flash in a Wildborn. Turn three might play Augur to give me more board presence over dungeon map, which isn't needed to play Aliwick. Could also play Florahedron and add a counter to the Wildborn Preserver. Which might not be necessary since Augur as a 2-3 still blocks relatively well. Although if our opponent has removal for Augur, we don't get any value, whereas I maybe would have been able to get a bit of value by waiting and maybe playing a land off the top. But Mono White's not a deck that has a ton of removal necessarily. Angel of Eternal Dawn actually prevents us from ramping in some way, so I guess not too upset about missing that accelerant now. And then now we could play a Florahedron. Pump the Wildborn Preserver, uh, which will also enable Coven for the future. And then also gives us a blocker for Angel of Eternal Dawn. And we'll stay back. Don't necessarily want to draw Sculptor of Winter, but Abundant Harvest for a land also seems unnecessary. Alright, Griffin Airy implies some life gain synergy. Get to play my land off the top, Rishkar's nice. Second, Rishkar puts counters on two different creatures to make my Karn's Bastion more exciting in the future. So how about... Augur... and Rishkar himself. And then do I want to pay? I guess I could pay maybe one. And then I can still play Sculptor of Winter. And I guess I'll pay one again, sure. And pass, keep our reach creature on defense. And now that our defenses are up, we can play Aliwick, start venturing. Dungeon map, another way to venture, eventually reach that emblem. And with a uh, plain white celebration, we can also speed up the ultimate process. Now we cannot play planeswalkers off the top, but I could abundant harvest for a non land to still play Vivian. And then can play Vivian, and I could still play Aliwick as well. This can make a Reach Beast. And then do I want to pay? I don't think so, no. And then the Beasts also make mana with Rishkar, because it doesn't specify plus one counter, so it can be any counter. And we'll uh, go for the Lost Mine. I might have tapped a few too many creatures in the process here, so our Planeswalkers could be under pressure. But we'll see what happens next. Opponent could go for an all-out attack. But at least they're split between two different Planeswalkers. Adlin could trade for Preserver. Or we could chump it. I guess Adlin's going face, so I could just take the 10. So 
So who's attacking Eliwick? We've got the Stalwart, Angels going and Vivian, and then both Spirit Tokens at Eliwick, and a Human at Vivian. Okay, so Vivian would survive at the moment. So if I want to save Eliwick, could block like so. She still takes 3 damage, and we take 11 from Adlin, that seems fine. Then we just want to keep venturing, present more reach creatures, and we should be alright. Play land for free. Then what's next in the dungeon? Can make a goblin or a treasure. Could also minus two Vivian to maybe get the Troubadour after playing Gergroth. Kind of like that idea. Also might have wanted to keep Karn's Bastion untapped so we could proliferate at instant speed. And then do I want to pay? Probably not need it. Can play a dungeon map. And then next turn with Plain White Celebration I should be able to emblem. And we can still activate dungeon map in the opponent's turn as well. And uh, yeah, again, probably not necessary here. Plus one counter on maybe the goblin. So that can also tap for mana. Alright, Legion's Landing could transform right now. But we've got multiple Reach creatures now, so I don't think our opponent's attacking. Oh, never mind. So how do we want to block? Troubadour can trade for Adlin. Gergroth can eat like a Sun Home Stalwart maybe. Block some additional flyers. And our opponent has seen enough, sadly. Didn't get to see Plain White to uh, Ultimate Eliwick here. But uh, yeah, end of turn can activate Dungeon Map, untap Plain White Celebration. Can add a whole bunch of plus one counters and loyalty counters to our planeswalkers. Give our team the nice plus two plus two trample and uh, haste bonus from Eliwick, and we should have been able to attack for the win. Sweet. So, yeah, we managed to pretty much ultimate Eliwick in every game, which is more than I expected. So, that reduced ultimates from minus seven to minus six makes it a lot easier to achieve the emblem. And despite there not being a ton of adventure into the dungeon cards in mono green, as long as we find one or two along the way, it is a very big help in achieving that completed dungeon to get the plus two plus two bonus. So yeah, as long as you mulligan to find some early acceleration to try and get Eliwick in play sooner, you should be having a good time. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.